Hey there guys, Matt Guzman here, back with another video, and today is going to be about how to get the Reading Merit Badge. Now, this Merit Badge is pretty simple, especially because most people are going back to school in person. It makes it easier to get the Reading Merit Badge because you can access your school library. You don't need a school library. It makes it easier, though, because of the requirements that are coming up. But there are multiple ways to do this Merit Badge, and it's very, very simple. The first requirement says to do all of the following. 1A, do each of the following, it says take a tour of a library. Um, I'm guessing that because of Corona, you could have also done this through an online library, such as the Library of Congress. Um, online things are good because uh, if you aren't able to go to the library, or I mean, let's face it, some of us are just too lazy, but for people that have access to it, you can use things like Amazon Prime, Audible, or other websites that let you have eBooks or the Library of Congress, which lets you look up like records and stuff. It's pretty cool. Just stuff like that. Or you could take an in-person tour of a library, either at your local one or at your school. That was just like little suggestions. It's, the actual requirement says take a tour of a library and discuss with your counselor how the library is organized and what resources and or services are offered in the library. 1B says to learn how to search a library's card catalog or computerized catalog by author, title, and subject. Now, I remember in ninth grade, um, they had like an orientation for the library kind of thing, where the librarian taught the ninth graders how to do stuff like this. And it's to my knowledge that most schools do that same thing. So these next few requirements, if you have had some kind of like ninth grade orientation in high school, then these most likely would have been gotten done for you. Because 1C says, in a library, Search the card catalog or computerized catalog for six books of four different types, such as poetry, fiction, nonfiction, and biographies. Again, this would be easier to do in a school setting. Notice that it just says to search the catalog for the six books. You don't actually have to read the six books, but you just need to search the catalog for it. Because the next requirement says, with the assistance of your merit badge counselor or the librarian, see if you can locate on the shelves the six books you selected. So I've found that many people are discouraged from reading because they just find it boring in general. So if you find books that you think you would enjoy, like for me, I like fantasy stuff. So The Hobbit, it was pretty interesting to me. Uh, also, Harry Potter, I've read that too. Even though like people might consider them nerd books, I mean, it really doesn't matter. You just need to find something that you can read and enjoy. Um, and also, finding time to read it as well. Some people just would rather do other things but if you literally just set off like 20 to 30 minutes a day to read like sometimes i would just sit i would literally just sit on my bed and just read and sometimes if the book is really good i would just get lost in my own thoughts and having a good setting to read helps as well because you're relaxed and you're getting into the book and if you don't have anything disturbing around you then you're able to just get through those 20 to 30 minutes you set aside so even though you might not be that interested you can still make it easier for you to get the books read through and get the merit badge. Requirement number two also says to do each of the following. 2A, identify a book you have enjoyed and find out what other books the author has written. And 2B says look at one or more best books lists. These can be based on year, subject, or even all time and identify at least one book you would like to read. Again, you don't actually have to read something yet just do the research and the process of finding the book. Now, requirement three now says to read four different types of books, such as poetry, fiction, nonfiction, or biographies. And you're supposed to do any one of the following for each of those books you have read. Now, the first option, 3A, says to write a review of the book and include what you liked and didn't like about it, and include if you would recommend this book and to who might enjoy reading it. Or watch a movie based on the book, what was the same and or different between them, which did you enjoy more, and discuss this with your merit badge counselor. Number four says to read a nonfiction book or magazine that teaches you how to do something like cooking, woodbuilding projects, uh, video game design, science experiments, knot tying, etc and in doing that, with your counselor's and parent or guardian's permission, complete a project from that book and share your experience with your merit badge counselor. 
There's also a side note saying that merit badge pamphlets do not count towards completing this requirement, but you need to have some kind of how-to that you can do a project off of. Number five says to read about the world around you from any two sources, books, magazines, newspapers, the internet, field manuals, etc. Just read about the world around you, basically getting info or news. Topics may include scouting, sports, environmental problems, politics, social issues, current events, nature, religion, and discuss what you have learned with your counselor. Now, the last requirement has a few different things. Six says, with your counselors and parents or guardians permission, choose one of the following activities and devote at least four hours of service to that activity and discuss your participation with your counselor. There are, I think, five options, and again, you only need to choose one. First option says to read to a sick, blind, or homebound people or persons in a hospital and or extended care facility. Option B says to perform volunteer work at your school library or public library. Option C says to read stories to younger children in a group or individually. That's the one I did, seeing that I have three younger siblings. I read um, multiple stories and multiple books to my youngest uh, sibling. She's nine years old, and I was reading a variety of books to her, actually. So... I think this requirement is actually much easier if you have a younger sibling, especially for me because my si younger sibling, it's not that she doesn't like reading, but if she has a book she does actually like, she'll read it. So I figured I would uh, show her some books that I read when I was about her age. This one I read when I was her age. This one I read when I was like 12 and I love them both. And the reason why I liked this one is because it's just so stupid, but it's still easy to understand at a young age. So what I did is I sat down with her and did different voices, which made the four hours more variable when I needed to read to her. And actually, since you, uh, you, if you find books that are really short, you can end up reading multiple to, to whoever you're reading to. It's just, for me, it's easier since I have a younger sibling. And if you have a younger sibling too, then it might be easier. Also, this is called Great Illustrated Classics. If you do know the book Robinson Crusoe, it's actually a very, it's pretty long actually. This book is specifically made for kids. It has pictures and the story is shortened and uses language that's easier to understand. So these kinds of books are good as well, because especially if you're reading it to a younger audience that has to like, you know, sit through the book, it's easier for them to understand. So funny books and also just having a younger sibling would help because, you know, you can read it to them whenever you need to. And most likely your younger sibling also has to do reading assignments at school. So it's a win-win. And 6D, organize a book swap in your troop, school, or place of worship. And the last option, uh, 6E, says to organize a book drive to collect books and donate them to an organization in need. Now, for the reading merit badge, surprisingly, there weren't that much actual reading to do. Like, some of you may think, oh, four books is way too much to read. But it, it really isn't, especially if they're books that you actually like. And you can easily just do all those research processing and all those like looking things up in catalogs. Those can easily be done. It's just actually reading things takes a little bit of devotion to, especially the four hours of service. But other than that, it's a very simple merit badge. You can also read books from home as well. My dad has like an entire bookshelf of act like books in like different genres as well, which helps because the requirements on here say to read books of different genres. So having books with you at home will help and getting the requirements this way was a lot faster for me and also faster in choosing books to read for the four hours of service. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're doing the merit badge as well. So very simple badge, simple video. Thank you for watching my video, and if you do happen to enjoy this video on how to get the Reading Merit Badge, please like and subscribe and turn on notifications on my channel, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.